Marshal. If only I had to do it all over again is a constant cry from the human heart. And the implication is, of course, that if some magical power could grant the plea, how much better things would be handled. Or at the very least, how differently. But is that a valid concept? Does it follow inevitably that people could or would handle things better a second time around? Injury boys, handle with care. That's it. Nice and easy. Keep him flat on the cart. How is he, Doc? Still breathing, Sergeant. Touch and go. You want to stay with it as we take him in? What's he saying? Search me. Could hold up a minute so I can hear what he's Not saying. Not a second, Sergeant. Anything this guy has to tell you will be after he's operated on, not before. If then. It was... Sounds like he's talking with someone. Asking for something. It was yesterday. There, there, there. Something about <laughs> yesterday. I what this baby ought to be worrying about is tomorrow. Our mystery drama, The Man Who Asked for Yesterday was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Mandel Kramer. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. An almost always misquoted quote by an obscure poet is the theme of tonight's spine tingler. Backward, turn backward, O time in thy flight. If you haven't spotted the misquote, I'll clear it up for you later. Concentrate first on the fascinating problem of a man with fatal brain injury who still finds time to talk to himself. Are you taking him straight to surgery? No, not yet. Yeah, Pre-op yeah. first. And an operating team has to be assembled. Yeah, yeah. Can I hang around? On the chance while he's talking to himself, I can get a lead? Be my guest. With that bullet in his brain, I doubt if even subconsciously he can track anymore. But he's still trying to say something. To who? Us? Himself? Hey, Daddy in the sky. I don't know. He may be louder. Oh, if you could only... He sure ain't clearer. I'd give a lot to know if he's really making any sense or what he's trying to say. I never had a chance. I should have had a chance. Somebody should have given me a chance. What kind of chance, Mort? What? Who? who? What kind of chance should you have? Well, the cards were all stacked against me. I mean, how was I to know? The cards were stacked. So? Don't you see, if I even suspected for a moment, if I thought that my own wife... Now, what's the use? Don't give up yet, Mort. Look, mister, I don't know who you are, and it's like I'm wasting my breath. But I can tell you something. If I could have yesterday to live over... Suppose you could... What would you change? You'd have to know what happened to me first. Suppose you could convince me that yesterday should be lived over. Would you be willing for me to give you that opportunity? If it were only possible. Well, tell me why you'd like to ask for yesterday over again. What have I got to lose? That's quite a leading question. One you'll have to answer for yourself. Do you want to tell me about yesterday? It started like any other day. The tight pull behind my eyes. The furry tongue, the shivery feeling of insecurity. 
not just because my legs and my hands were shaky, but because my mind was sticky and not quite tracked, and because I had that sick, sick feeling that I'd fail Cherry again, that I was less than a wife should expect. Oh, crying out loud, Mort. Mm-hmm. Your alarm to wake you up. Mm-hmm. Turn it mm-hmm. off. Oh, oh, sure, honey. Uh, sure. Uh, did you have a bad night, baby? What'd you expect with you turning and twisting and moaning? I didn't sleep. I'm sorry, honey. It's just that I'm going crazy. I don't know what I'm going to do. I thought you said your horse had to come in today. It has. It has. Fifteen straight days. The favorite has run out of the money. The law of averages has got to catch up. So, today you'll win. And everything's fine again. Uh, there's only one hitch. What? To put down a bet, you got to have the scratch. I haven't got any. So, you'll borrow some. Yeah, uh, where? Well, Uncle Joe wouldn't give you some. Oh, come on, Sherry. You know my partner wouldn't lend his mother a dime without good security. And I'm not even real family. Well, he always says you're like a son to him. Yeah, it's because he let me buy a piece of the business so he could have a diamond cutter's salary and work me ten hours a day for free. I don't know why you let him get away with it. Look, it's the carrot on the stick, sweetheart. He dangles it in front of my nose every day. Like a son you are to me, Mort. Someday this is going to be all yours. I wish he'd die already. Uh, Don't get your hopes up. He's as tough as an old shoe. Well... I got to get going. No, wait wait a minute, Mark. What? About the bet. If you don't want to ask Uncle Joe, why don't you borrow from a bank? Sherry, you know I've got no credit. Well, you've got the piece of the business. I've used that as collateral. Your insurance. That's tied up, too. Then you're really flat, huh? I'm up to my ears in hock. I'm with nothing. The only thing I've got left that's worth a cent is my body, and I wish to God I had the guts to fall out a window so at least you'd oh, be able to... Gosh. Hush, honey. Don't you dare talk like that. We'll work it out. You'll see. Oh. Oh, I don't deserve you, honey. Now, let's not go into that. Look, why don't you take your shower and shave, and you and me will get our heads together over breakfast and see what we can figure out. Oh, uh, that's a good idea, honey. I won't be long. Take your time. You know, you're the best wife a man ever had. Mm-hmm. Just you keep thinking that way. Sherry? Whatever it is, it'll wait till breakfast. Now get in the shower. I thought he'd never move. Oh, gee, come on. Come on. Take it easy. Come on. Come on. Yeah? Herb. It's me, Sherry. Hi, Sugar. Why so early? I just want to tell you we finally got a little pigeon right where we want him. Did he leave already? No, he's in the shower. But he finally admitted it this morning. He hit bottom. So do we go ahead? You know the deal, Sugar. You can count on me. Then we move. <laughs> More coffee, Mort? No, no, no. I wish we had more time to think. If if only you'd been here last night, at least I could have slept on it. Oh, I'm sorry I was so late. But you know Marge. I don't know why you spend so much time with her. Oh, she's a good friend. And with you working the hours you do, I... I know, I know. I guess I shouldn't complain. Well, never mind. Anyway, it's like I told you. Marge is a wonder with the Ouija board. And how she could have read my mind... And all about worrying over you, she I... She actually said that I was going to make a killing today? Her very words. I just got to hit a winner. Never mind Ouija boards. It's plain mathematics. So, go ahead. Make the bet. Without cash? Well, now, surely that old bookie of yours will take your check. You've been a good customer. And then you can pay him when you win. Mm-hmm. And suppose I lose. More will you think positive for once. This is going to work out just right for us. I know it. All right. All right. I'm going to take a chance, honey. I mean, what what could they do if I lose? You, you can't get blood out of a stone. Ah, oh, that's the way. Now, you just keep thinking positive. Yeah? Oh, Herb. Herb, it's, it's Mort Herman. Hi, Mort. What's your action? Look, I want to get a bet down on the fourth at Jasper Gardens today. You got it. What horse? How much? The favorite. Final chance. Thousand on the nose. A little steep, Mort. I, I want 
that covered. Well, it, it, it's Saturday. The banks are closed, huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't I have know. that much on me in cash, you know. I'll tell you what. You dropped me off your personal check on the way down, and you got your bet. With a real good customer like you, what have I got to lose, huh? <laughs> Sherry, baby, I'd like to die laughing. You should have seen him writing out this bum check. His hand was shaking so bad, I thought he'd never be able to sign. <laughs> but you got it. And he is hooked. Oh, not so fast. He is playing a favorite. You know, that horse could win. No, nope. you and me are going to go with better odds. What do you mean? Pass me that slip of paper with that, that number on it, huh? This? Well, that's... It's Mort's direct phone line at the store. Uh, yeah, I asked him how I could reach him this afternoon after at the race in, in case my phone should be tied up. Now, look, don't make a sound. Don't make a sound while I sell a real bill of goods. Hello? Hi, is that you, Mort? Yeah. Hi, this is Herb. Now, listen, I got your bet down, and and then I started to get cold feet about that check. Well, look, if you want to cancel out... Now, I said, listen, now, don't interrupt me. And that bet's up the line by now. I can't cancel out, but I can do you a favor. Now, we're playing with rough boys, Mort, and like I said, you've been a good customer. I don't want to see you hurt. Hurt bad. But the favorite can't lose. The favorite ain't gonna win. The fix is in. The winner is Tiny Lady. She'll go up at a hundred to one. Now, I'm gonna stick my neck out for you. Give me another check at anything up to... 2500 and I'll see you get down on Tidy Lady. A hundred to one? A sure thing? A lead pipe cinch. You can't lose. I'll be right over. <laughs> and that sews that up, Sherry baby. Herb, there isn't any chance that Tidy Lady could win. <laughs> She'll be lucky to get out of the gate. <laughs> Sherry? Sherry, where are you? In the living room, Mort. Sherry, the most awful thing has happened. The horse, I better... Herb, what, what are you... How did you get here? Well, uh, Herb's been trying to reach you at the office, darling. Oh, well, I... I, I uh... I'll just leave you two alone. Too bad it was the wrong horse, eh, Mort? Herb, what happened? You told me Tidy Lady couldn't lose. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. Even a bookie gets bum information. Well, let's get our business settled. I got a thousand bucks for you on final chance. She went off at even money. So that means you owe fifteen hundred on the other bet. But you said Tidy Lady couldn't lose. That's the Phillies for you. Can't trust them. And I can't trust you more. Can I? Now, look, Herb. You know and I know these checks ain't worth the paper they're written on. If I drop them, they bounce out of sight. Now, what are you going to do to make them good? Now, Herb, give me a chance, will you? Give me a break. Oh, yeah, sure. I might, Mort, but the men upstairs, not a chance. I'm only an errand boy. These are hard cases, Mort. You better pay off. How can I? Well, there is one way. Let me show you the only out you got. Go on. Go on. Oh, I must be crazy. I can't do this. You know what happens if you don't. Come on. Well, let's get on I with it. I can't rob my own partner. I'm not going to open that safe. Oh, yes, you are. Does this get it through your head? I'm not wasting any more time. But put the gun away. Oh, no. You open that safe. Or I'll save the big boy's hitman some trouble. All right, all right, all right. Now, look, just, 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 just enough to pay off what I owe now. I'll handle the payoff. You open up. There we are. That's it. Now, start scooping them up. But look, Herb. All of them. Leave the jewelry, but take all of those loose diamonds. You said only enough to pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to con you into opening that safe, but don't worry. I'm not greedy. You wait till you hear my real proposition when we get back to your apartment. There's nothing else we can do, Mort. I'm really being very generous. $50,000 in diamonds and the seats I booked for you to South America. Well, it's time to go if you're going to make that plain. How can you be sure I won't refuse? For the same reason I know you won't be back. One thing I'm not paying off are your gambling debts. That'll keep you away from home. Well, uh, 
Mrs. Herman, are you all packed as I requested? Yes. Then I'll drive you to the airport just to make sure you get off all right. What did we come off the highway for? We're almost out of gas. Well, the airport's just across the bridge. You could have made it. Turn left here. Right here, under the bridge. There's no gas station down here. This road goes right to the river. That's a dead end. You are so right, Mort. Particularly for you. What do you mean? End of the line. But I'm going to South America. You said there were two tickets? Yeah. For Sherry and me. What? Didn't you ever think it was funny? My dear friend Marge never came to visit us. You mean it was always Herb and you? Sure. It takes someone as stupid as you not to guess. Where's your car, Herb? It's on the other side of the wharf, honey. But uh, don't go yet. I'll need you to help me get this car rolling into the river. Oh, I don't want to be here. No. You're not going to kill me, Herb. You're not going to kill me. As soon as that plane is making enough racket to kill the sound of... Herb, no. Now. Herb. Uh Herb. I tried to jerk my head away frantically at the last moment, but I could feel the bullet smash into my skull and then burst in a fountain of searing sparks. But did Mort Herman really die? If so, how could he be able to ask his mysterious partner in conversation to borrow back yesterday? Well... We'll find that out when we return shortly with Act Two. Can a man on the threshold of death hesitate and draw back? Is there for any of us the hope of a second chance? And if we were granted this chance, if we were allowed to retrace our steps... Could we change the course of events and find another ending? We're about to return to the story of a man who asked for yesterday. Am I dead? Not quite. You're in a hospital with a bullet in your brain. As the saying goes, as good as dead. And Sherry and Herb got away with it. Oh, it isn't fair. I only had it to do all over again. Suppose you had. Could you do better? Of course. Of course, if I knew what I know now. Naturally. That would have to be a precondition if you're asking for yesterday to live over again. You mean there's a chance that I can? If you deserve it. Oh, please. Please, give me the chance. Can you? Oh, yes. Well, why not? I'm a bit of a gambler myself. Let's see how you can remake yesterday. Oh, but crying out loud, more. It's your alarm to mm. wake you up. Turn it no. off. Oh, oh, sure, honey. Wow. Oh, you had a bad night, honey? Oh, what'd you expect with you turning and twisting and groaning and moaning? I didn't sleep. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. It's just that I'm going crazy. I don't know what I'm going to do. But that was yesterday. Now I know what I'm going to do. Or at least what I'm not going to do. I was aware of Sherry's voice saying all the things as we had said them. But I was thinking to myself how I hated her, knowing the truth. Her pretense of love, the story about her friend Marge. But now that I knew I was the one marked for the kill, things were going to be different. But not till I was ready. Till then it had to stay the same. Yeah? Oh, Herb, it's Mort Herman. Uh, look, I want to get a bet down on the 4th at Jasper Gardens today. You got it. What horse? How much? The favorite. Final chance. A thousand on the nose. But, gee, <laughs> that's a little steep. I, uh, I'd want that covered. Oh, look, it's Saturday, Herb. Uh, the banks are closed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I haven't got that much on me in cash. I'll tell you what. Drop me 
me off your personal. It was hard to sound scared the way I had before, knowing that slimy rat was two-timing me with Sherry. But I had to play it out so he wouldn't know this time. Know that he was going to be the one that got hooked. Just By the second call, I was ready to make the first of my changes in the action. And I'll, uh, I'll see you get down on tidy lady. A hundred to one? A sure thing? I'll let pipe cinch you can't lose. Oh, boy, look, I know I can trust you, Herb. You wouldn't steer me wrong. You know it, kid. Well, look, all right, how about give me a real break now? Spring me for a big one. Ten G. Now, uh, uh, uh wait a minute, I... You know I, I'm good for it, uh, don't you? Yeah, well... Look, I got a safe full of diamonds would cover that ten ways from nowhere. Uh, I bet that big might shake the odds. Herb, come on, you can lay it off 50 different places. Okay, you got a deal. But bring me that check. My upping the ante was a jolt for Herb, I knew. But I also knew that he had to go for it. As I wrote out the worthless check, I could just figure the conversation now going on between Herb and my no-good cheating wife. Did he go for it? Yeah, yeah. Herb, is something wrong? No, I... I just got a little mad is all. What? <laughs> I thought I had my pigeon pegged. A small potatoes better like Mort wouldn't dare look beyond a two-and-a-half grand bet, but... He had a nerve to hold me up for ten thou. So what's the difference? Doesn't that give you even more of a lever to talk him into opening up the safe? Yeah, but it'll run me quite a few grand more to pay off the boys upstairs. Ah, oh, it's a drop in the bucket, Herb. There's easy a million bucks in that safe. So what do you care? Yeah, I just got a little nervous, hon. That fool should balk at going through with a big caper. I would like to be holding those bum checks I couldn't cover. I don't want to end up in the river with concrete boots. Ah, oh, don't even talk like that, Herb. He'll cave in like plaster of Paris once he gets the notion he might be hurt. I promise you. Uh, you made the plane reservations. Ah, I went even better than that. The tickets are sitting right at home. Did you bring me his gun? Well, I didn't want to carry it around. It's in the drawer at home. You're not going to chicken out on going all the way. <sighs> don't you worry. Because after the heist, he's got to go. He'll be the one the police figure for it. They'll be looking for him, and we don't want him found. Herb, there's n no outside chance this tidy lady could win. <laughs> She'll be lucky to get out of the gates. What they didn't know was that from here on in, the odds were changed. I was calling the shots. And don't worry, Uncle Joe. I I'll mind the store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll set the burglar alarm when I leave. Don't worry. Everything's under control. <laughs> yes, sir, Uncle. Your little boy, Morty, has everything under complete control. If I didn't know about that unnumbered bank account you've got in Switzerland or all the blue chip stocks, I'd hate to do this to you, Uncle Joe. 22 right. 8 to the left. 31 right. 14 back. Ah. A real nephew, maybe you could have trusted, but a made-up one, you got only yourself to blame. I cleaned the safe out of everything in diamonds, just like Herbie would have made me do. They went into my pockets. It's surprising how little space nearly a million dollars in diamonds takes up. Then I went to deliver my check to Herb. I'm stretching quite a point for you, Mort. Oh, well, I know that, Herb, but I'll be good for the check. Oh, I mean, even... don't give it a thought. You and me, we're going to be rich men after that 4.30 finish. And no kickbacks. <laughs> we're riding on all the sucker's money. Is it, you, you want a drink to it? No, 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 no. I'll, I'll, I'll pass, Herb. I'm, uh, I'm kind of pooped. I've been under a lot of strain lately. So I think I'll, uh, I'll just go on home and take a little nap until post time. Hey, you're not going back to the store, huh? No, no. I, I think I'll just watch on TV while our jockey boots our fortune home. Well, uh, maybe I come up and join you. We could celebrate together. Why not? Not in a million years, Herbie. Not ever. You're not seeing me again. When I heard you laying off those bets that you had to guarantee personally, my score with you was all settled. Who's that? Me. Mort. What are you doing home so early? Why, aren't you glad to see me? Well, of course, sweetie, but... What are you uh, doing with the gun? Just checking to see if it's loaded. Why? Well, you know I always do that when I'm carrying diamonds. Diamonds? You're carrying some now? Yep. Oh, what for? I'm going on a trip. When? Right now. Oh, but I thought... You thought what? Well, I thought... 
Well, um, weren't, uh, didn't you have a bet on a horse or something? That's right, I do. Two of them, to be exact. On the same race. Well, I don't understand. Yeah. Pistol's all set now. I think you do, Sherry. What? Understand. What, honey? You're, you're so strange. What are you trying to say to me? I'm not trying, honey. I'm going to lay it right on the line for you. How long have you and her been closing me out? What? Knock it off, Sherry. I can do without the injured innocence. I know the whole scheme, so you better come clean. Well, I, I don't know what you're talking about. You got tired of me, Sherry. Maybe you only married me in the beginning because diamonds were very big in your eyes. But I blew it all because I ran to the ponies. And they cleaned out what little I had. And then you met my bookie. <laughs> you want to know something? I never really took a close look at him until today. He's quite a hunk of man. If you'd have told me, maybe I couldn't have blamed you for going for him instead of... No, no, look, Mort, before you do something crazy, just... No, not crazy, baby, no more. Don't... Don't point that at me. Don't you think I have the right? Why? Because you know my horse is going to lose. And then I'm set up to open the safe, Sheriff. Then when it's opened, your lover is going to clean it all out, pointing this gun at me. And then you're going to drive me out to the airport and shoot me and put me in my car and sink it in the river while you and Herb take off for South America together. Isn't that the plan? How could you not? I mean, what are you talking about? You, me, and Herb. And the future. I ought to put a bullet in your head right now. No, Martin, no. No, listen to me. I'm, I'm Sherry. You're Sherry. Your wife. Someone who'd do anything for you. Or to me. No, 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 Mort, please. No, give me a chance. Whatever's in your mind, we can work this out. Can't we somehow? Oh, my God, Mort, can't we somehow? Please. <laughs> So the worm has turned with a vengeance. The biter is bit, and the man who asked for yesterday seems in full control and in command of history with the power to change the shadow that coming events cast their shadow before. We'll see just how when I return shortly with Act Three. has begged for forgiveness. A woman we already know deserves none. And what about her husband? A man with a miraculous second chance. Has he the humanity to be forgiving? Can he change the already preordained course of fate? In the first playing out of this particular chain of events, who was the ultimate victim? And who escaped? The answers are waiting. Please, Mort. Give me a chance. I think we can work it out, Sherry, with your cooperation. But well, just tell me how. It'll be just the way you and her planned it. Except that I'll be using the other ticket that you've already reserved for South America. But what do we use for money? Just what you and Herb would have used. I already have the diamonds. We can leave immediately. Yeah, but it's the horse race. That doesn't matter anymore. Doesn't matter? When you've already bet Don't 10, look thousand... so guilty, Sherry. I'm aware that you know about that. You're scaring me. I'm also me. aware that the bet means nothing to me. That the horse isn't going to win. How can you know all these things? Let's just write it off to the strange fact that I have suddenly acquired second sight. Now you're scaring me even more. Maybe that's the object. Come on, let's pack and go. But, Mort, if you're going to lose the bet, how is it going to be paid? Oh, that's the beauty part. That's going to be your ex-boyfriend's problem, Herbie. But he hasn't the money. Got... Well, like he threatened me, then he can pay for it in blood. Now, do you want to hang around and do the same? You couldn't leave me. I know too much. That's how it goes, sweetie. That's why my offer to come along isn't exactly take it or leave it. Let me put it another way. I've already reserved an earlier flight. And I'm leaving on it with or without you. Now, it's now or never. Make up your mind. <laughs> Still isn't too late. Too late for what? To go back. Start all over. How? Well, the race hasn't been run. I could talk to Herb. 
Maybe get him to call off the bets? Forget it, Sherry. The bets are down, all of them. It's too late to call anything back. What are you slowing down for? We need some gas. We must have enough to get us to the airport. We're right at the bridge. Oh, I wish you could know how familiar this conversation sounds. Why are you turning off? We have an appointment right below the bridge here. You're scaring me again. More... What is it about you that... Maybe I've become the agent of fate. The what? It's finally catching up to you, Sherry. I don't know what... More, don't, don't turn left here. This is a dead end. It, it ends at the river. I found that out once. Well, Mort, I... I think you're crazy. Mort, let me out of here. Oh, no, sweetie. I can't do that. A coffin <laughs> is a coffin, what? no matter who the corpse turns out to be. What do you mean? You and her plan for it to be me. I've just revised the plan. Put that I've gun decided away. the only one that really deserves to be shot is you. Uh. Goodbye, Sherry. Welcome to my grave. I forgot I should have waited for a plane going over to drown out the shot that killed Cherry. But it didn't really matter. No one heard it but the two of us. It wasn't much of a climb back to the highway, and I had plenty of time to walk to the airport. I had no baggage except a million dollars worth of diamonds. And for the first time in as long as I could remember, I was free. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. An unexpected total inversion due to extreme weather conditions, aggravated by a heavy smog, has caused a temporary shutdown in all air traffic. Arriving planes are being shunted to alternate landing fields, and there will be no, repeat, no takeoffs on all scheduled airlines until further notice. <laughs> The stunning announcement caused me my first twinge of terror. I had to get away. With a deep breath, I took hold of myself. I mustn't give way to panic. I was safe till at least Monday, as far as the diamonds were concerned. Their loss wouldn't be discovered until then. But I had to get out of town before the race was run and lost. I knew Herbie would be looking for me. I could head for the nearest airport that was cleared and take a plane from there. The answer was just across the terminal building. Your attention. Oh, miss? Excuse me, miss? I'll, I'll be with you in just a minute, I've sir. been waiting for almost half an hour. Be back in a moment. Some panic, huh? You think there was a war around or something, huh? They've canceled all the flights. Yeah, I just heard. I come in here to use a plumbing. Now I see where maybe I'm going to make a heavy buck today. Why? What do you mean? What do you say, mister? I run a hack. Oh, excuse me. Just a minute. Uh, miss? It's the car you want to rent, sir. I'm sorry, but there isn't a thing. You want to go back to the city, friend? I, like I was saying, I got a hack outside. Oh, brother, you're a lifesaver. Yeah, well, you hit a deal. Fifty smackers. I'll tell you what. You take me to the nearest airport where planes are flying, and I'll pay all expenses and a hundred buck bonus. No sale, friend. I'm a family man. I don't show up for dinner. The wife would clobber me. Besides, save your dough. For a 5 I take you to the railroad station. You get a train out. A train? Yeah, sure. Come on. Oh, what's the matter, driver? You got me. Some traffic jam. Looks like fire trucks up there at the station. Well, there's a cop over there. See if you can get his attention. We got it already, Bubby. He's on his way already. You headed for the railroad station, buddy? Uh, yeah, officer. I got a passenger going. Yeah, you got nobody going nowhere. There's a fire in the tunnel. There won't be a train out of here for several hours. Turn over the next corner. Now, wait a minute, Sergeant. You don't understand. I've got Mr. to leave. Do yourself a favor. With the airport shut down, this fire in the tunnel, what you should be worrying is find yourself a room for the night. Well, the bus station. I can get a bus. <laughs> That's where the laugh is on them. I mean, the business they could be doing tonight, and their drivers had to pick this weekend to go out on strike. Okay, Hacky, you're holding up traffic. Move on. What am I going to do? I don't know, mister. But I'll tell you one thing. You've about used up your 50. Make up your mind wherever I drop you. They better be close. Just, just let me think a minute. It was a nightmare. The bad dream to end all bad dreams. You know the kind. Where you have to escape. 
but you can only move in slow motion. Your feet are buried in mud like glue. You're caught. You're trapped. You're helpless. You know there's no way out. Okay, Mac. This is it. End of the line. I don't take you no further. <laughs> hey, watch it, Bobby. <laughs> Let's not throw any fits or nothing. <laughs> I already got enough trouble out of here. Ah, uh, you don't get the joke. I ain't interested. I want you out. You know where you've stopped? Right in front of my own house. So ain't that a lucky coincidence? I brought you home. So out. This is the last place in the world I want to be. I can't get out Hello, here. Oh, Mort. I've been waiting for you. Herb. Look, Herb. Let me give you a hand out. You look a bit shaky. And don't make any sudden moves. Oh, uh, you got your fare, Hacky? I got it, mister. Take care of your friend there. He's kind of in a bad way. All right, let's keep our hands nice and open where I can see him. And then we'll go inside and we'll have a little chat. So when you heard the race results, you came back to pay off your debt to me and you left Sherry waiting for you at the airport, right? That's right, Herb. And you want to pay me off in dime? Well, like I told you this morning, I, I don't have the cash on hand. Yeah, I'll get that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, this is Mr. Herman. Oh, they are? Oh, that's fine. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll be there to pick him up. Right away. Yeah, thank you for calling. What was that? The airport. Ceiling is lifted. They're flying again. They wanted to confirm your reservations. You're on the next flight out. Well, how am I going to get there? I got my car outside. Our business is all finished. I'll drive you out to the airport. Come on, Mort. We don't want to keep Mrs. Herman waiting. I appreciate you going out of your way like this, Herm. I don't mention it. As a matter of fact, it just fits in with my plans. What are you doing? Don't turn off here. You and I have a little final business to complete. No, 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 no. Not, not, not under the bridge. Oh, you know this little spot, huh? Is that where you gave it to Sherry? What are you talking about? Come on, jerk. When I took that gun from you, I could smell it had been fired recently. When I couldn't reach Sherry, as we planned earlier this afternoon, I had to figure maybe you'd caught on about us. That's why I was waiting for you when you got home. What did you do with her, Mort? I don't know what you're talking about. Sure you do. Come on, get out. Now, give me your coat. Her, please. Please. Coat, jacket, pants. I want all the diamonds. Her, please. Did you give her any chance? What did you do, shove her back in your car and roll it in? Look, she had, she okay. had no right. Okay, okay, you forget it. Now, you just drop those clothes and walk to the edge of the pier. I wish I had a car to bury you in. But I'll take my chances on the tide. Move! It didn't make any difference. It all turned out the same, didn't it, Herb? I don't know what you're talking about. But by me, it comes out even. Goodbye, Mort. <laughs> But I didn't change anything. Did you really think you could? But Herb gets away with everything. And I killed Cherry. At least she could still have been alive. Well, don't worry about that. Think back to the first of your yesterdays. Remember the second shot? Herb sent Cherry with you into the river. Locked in the car. Well, then how did I... When you were in the back seat. The door wasn't closed completely. The water pressure opened. You surfaced. And drifted on the tide to the bank. Where a police sergeant found you and brought you here. Where? To the hospital. They're operating on you right now. Then I'll live? Do you think you should? I could prove it to you. If you'd just let me have yesterday again. Oh, no. No, I'm quite satisfied now. About what? That you belong to me. Now I pick up my part of the bargain. 
your part. Tomorrow, I'll take care of all your tomorrows. Your man just died on the operating table, Sergeant. You can go on home. Catch him shut eye. You kidding? I just got a new headache. Know that cut off by the bridge to the airport? Yeah, the one that goes down to the docks? Yeah. Guy coming up from there got creamed by a trailer truck. Killed him. Busted his car to nothing. And get this. Scattered diamonds all over the road. I mean, by the hundreds. Stolen? That's my job to find out. Well, <laughs> sorry about your patient. Funny thing. I saw that little guy earlier today by the railroad station. Frantic to get out of town. With all the communication jam-ups we had today. Wonder what he was trying to run from. I guess we'll never know. But we do, even if the sergeant never learns. And we also know it caught up with him. He was a weak little man, and a scared little man, and a stupid little man. None of which is any excuse. Mort Herman got exactly what he deserved. I'll be back shortly. In the beginning, if you remember, I mentioned an often misquoted line. Backward, turn backward, O time, in thy flight. It was written by a lady named Elizabeth Akers Allen. And the misquote is one word. Not thy, it's your flight. But the preposition is of minor interest. It's the adverb that really matters. Backward. To turn time backward. One of man's dreams since time began. An idle dream as we know now because even if we could, in the end, it turns out just the same. Our cast included Mandel Kramer, Paul Hecht, Evie Juster, Ralph Bell, and Gil Mack. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. You'll have to believe me that Leo won't give me a divorce. Don't you see how easy it would be to take his place? Yeah, fine, fine. But what happens to him? Well, that's the problem, isn't it? Yeah, that's the problem. I thought maybe... You could think of a way out. Yeah, I can, but I don't like it. Try it on me. No, I think you've already tried it on, and you like it. Maybe. Not maybe, positively. That's what you wanted to lay on me when you said you wanted to talk. <laughs> You're not only sexy, but you're smart. Yeah, you bet. Smart enough to stay away from murder. Well, who said anything about murder? I did, my lovely. I did. I said murder. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by the Kellogg Company, makers of Kellogg's Special K cereal. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.